Like many Canadians during the pandemic, I have been reading a ton <laughs> and, and more to go. But of these books that I've been reading, how many are by Canadian authors? We're going to chat about this today, but before we do, for the latest author interviews and behind the book stories, please hit that subscribe button. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of All About Canadian Books. I'm very excited to have author Susan Swan as a returning guest this week. Susan Swan is a journalist, feminist, novelist, activist, teacher, gardener, and she is very passionate about Canadian authors. And Susan is here to discuss why Canadians aren't reading Canadian books. Welcome back, Susan. Hi, Crystal. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming back. And I will mention to our viewers, if you missed uh, my previous interview with Susan Swan, I'll put a link at the end of this video because we talk about Susan's book, The Dead Celebrities Club. And Susan gives us some great behind the scenes stories about how she's obsessed with con men and how Conrad Black inspired her book, The Dead Celebrities Club. Okay, so Susan, um, Canadian authored books, they've been losing ground in our bookstores and our libraries to the point where you could say we have a bit of a crisis in the Canadian literary market. For those of us who may not have been familiar with this, can you can you tell us exactly what is going on in the Canadian literary market? Yeah, I, I did some research into this uh, about two years ago, and a lot of it was focused on the report called More Canada, mm -hmm. which was put out by James Lorimer, a small Canadian publisher, mm -hmm. and 28 other publishing um, types, really, editors, um, researchers, people that are, were involved in the business. And they found that Canadian books are not being read by Canadians. In 2005, 27% of the books that Canadians read were written by Canadians. The More Canada report found that now that figure is only 13%, and they've recently corrected it to 12%, so that's more than a 50% drop in yeah in Canadian books being read. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it reminds me of when I started out, I'm in my 70s and I came of age as an author, um, really at, in the beginning of the 80s. And it was hard, we were all working hard to create a Canadian audience for our literature. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that campaign went back to the 70s and the beginning of all the small Canadian presses. But it was, it felt like um, a bit of a, <clears throat> a struggle to get attention for your books in the 70s if you were a Canadian writer. And now we've come full circle. So, of course, that concerns me. It feels like all my life I've been a Canadian writer. Are we going back to a situation that was actually, is actually even worse than when I started out? Because we have so many wonderful Canadian writers right now. It's a real renaissance again, I think, with all the Black and Indigenous authors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an exciting scene, but our book market is broken. Yeah, and and that's that to me is is so surprising because, as you're saying, we have so many talented Canadian authors. Uh, more Canadian authors are being published than ever before. And I believe I the stat that I saw um, from that More Canada. 87% of the books Canadians read are either US or um, UK authors, which, which, is, which is really um, quite shocking. So, you know, Susan, can you just give us some insight into how this, how is this possible? Why is this happening? <laughs> well, I think it happened, Crystal, um, really sort of silently and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And it started with the digital sea change. 
when a lot of the publishers in Canada, the big uh, foreign owned corporations particularly, started using um, their American owners way of distributing data about books. Mm -hmm. And they were distributing it through these digital systems. But the digital systems didn't make any distinction between Canadian and American books. Let me, let me just backtrack for a minute about what I'm talking about when I mentioned data. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the information that goes out from the publisher to the bookstores, talking about the new books that are coming along. And um, it's all digitalized now. And there is very, very few distinctions made between a Canadian book and an American book. And so that means that the marketing information that goes out is a huge, huge sea of information in which you can't really figure out which are Canadian books and which aren't. So the libraries, for one, their Canadian collections have gone down because they're supplied by a company called Overdrive, which sells the digital rights to our libraries to um, reproduce a digital copy of the book. Mm -hmm. But when the libraries order from Overdrive, they can't tell whether they're ordering Canadian or American books. But it's, you know, the digital information is something that is very new. It started in 2005, as I said, and, and it's been a cumulative effect on, on the book market and people really haven't been paying attention to it. No, I, no, I, I had no idea. Um, and Susan, what's being done to, to like to change things so that this doesn't get any worse? Well, there are a number of things that, that can be done. Um, there are 68 recommendations in the, the report More Canada. And one of them is the idea that um, the independent bookstores here should have money from the federal government to promote Canadian books. Because going back again, we have to take a step back historically. When I um, started to become well known as a writer, the independent bookstores here, there were many, many in English Canada, mm -hmm. and they did a lot of um, promotion for Canadian books. Yes. They were really our, one of our champions. And, and uh, now the uh, chain, mostly Indigo, ha have um, kind of squeezed them out of the market and there's a small number of independent bookstores. So we've lost some of our champions. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is an English Canadian story though. In, in Quebec, they have, still have a large number of independent bookstores that promote Quebec literature. And also in Quebec, when um, institutions are ordering Quebec books, they, they, they are obliged, I think legally to order um books from quebec authors okay. so we we don't have that sense you know the it goes back to france really and their um the way they value art and culture as a as a marker of national identity and yeah. uh in english canada we certainly don't really have that at the moment it's it's all steered towards selling as many books as possible and making as much money as possible and forgetting that we're a, a small literature, a uh, small national literature in a, you know, this huge world of books of mostly American and, and um, English books. Yeah. The other champion that we've lost, and I'm sure you've noticed this, Crystal, is the book pages in the newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> and this too is due to the digital sea change because um, newspapers used to make their money from selling ads. And all the advertisers, I shouldn't say all, but most of the advertisers have gone online and away from print. Mm -hmm. So it's become very expensive for the Globe and Mail, for instance, to uh, run a big book page, a big book section. Mm -hmm. I think quite often there's only one page dedicated to Canadian book. No, I don't say that. Only one page dedicated to books, <laughs> Canadian books. <laughs> and that's true. The Star has been a little bit better, maybe two one and a half pages or two, mm -hmm. but it's not, um, 
it's not very much space. So the digital change, the lack of, you know, our independent bookstores in English Canada, yeah. And the lack of coverage in our, our media is, has been a huge impact on, on writers and publishers. And writers' incomes have dropped um, 27% since 1998. And, they, and writers never, never were very prosperous unless you were, you know, writing a number of bestsellers one after another. Yeah, yeah, Th that's the dream. <laughs> It's a it's a dream, um, but it's becoming, um, I guess, a a red herring because if you can't get your book discovered, then that's not going to happen. I say in an article I wrote for Now Magazine that you know the chances of Canadian books um, getting into the hands of Canadian readers at the moment is you know about the same chance that the milkmaid out of marrying the prince in a fairy tale yeah. because I have to go through this whole system that basically discriminates against them. Mm. It's, it's crazy. So what, what, as, what can I do as a book lover, a reader? What can I do, Susan? Well, you could get involved in campaigns um, that have been started. There's one campaign called Read Canadian. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Writers Union has been behind that uh, by one of their YA authors. Yeah. And it's um, not helpful to lecture people to read Canadian books because that makes it seem as if Canadian books are, you know, um, sort of medicine that you have to take with a spoonful <laughs> of sugar, right? And that, that's not true. Canadian writing, as I said, it's, it's, at, it's at some kind of peak right now. Yeah. Um, however, if the if the books um, can't be discovered easily, it doesn't matter how instantly available they are. Mm -hmm. so that's the other paradox. That you can order a Canadian book just like that, yeah. and and um, but you have to be able to find it first and know about it. Mm -hmm. And finding it and knowing about it has become very very difficult. But things some things are being done. Yes, I was I was noticing the other day. Um, that late in the fall of 2020, um, Heritage Canada put a $10 million incentive to distributors so that you, we would get more Canadian books in the hands of the local bookstores. And apparently it was a very successful program. Um, an increase of 10.3% of Canadian books were actually in the bookstores uh, for the pre-holiday season. But this was- wow. This was a, a one-off program. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, to, to your point, this is something that we desperately need to see more of. And as being a Canadian reader, um, so proud of our authors and it, we incredible talent pool in Canada, just incredible. Well, there, there are places like um, the National Archives that have started to distinguish Canadian books from American books. And um, that's a step in, in the right direction yeah. because I think probably most Canadian libraries, particularly those outside Toronto, are, aren't aware that this is even a problem. Yeah, and Many writers aren't aware that this is a problem. It, so right at the moment, we're at a kind of phase of, um, getting more awareness before mm -hmm. the problem can be fully addressed. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a story that um, kind of illustrates this in a way, Going, this goes back to the days when I started out. My first novel was published in 1983 about a giantess that exhibited with P.T. Barnum called The Biggest Modern Woman of the World. And I realized after the book came out that Canadian booksellers sold Canadian books at the back of their bookstores oh. under a section called Canadiana. Oh, which suggested you know, manuals on, on stripping pine furniture. <laughs> and at the front of the bookstore was the section called bestsellers. And they were all pretty much American and, and um, British books. So if you walked into the bookstore, you immediately got a message, well, you know, 
Canadian novels are are back there with with uh, pine furniture, um, <laughs> coffee table books, and 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 I, I wrote about it, and I went and spoke to the booksellers at the time, and said, you know, this is ridiculous. Why why aren't the Canadian books also up there at the front? Yeah. <laughs> and they said no. They said no. This is you know Canadians aren't that interested in Canadian books, so this is the way we have to sell them. And um, I said, no, I think you might be surprised. Anyway, of course that all shifted and they began to sell Canadian um, books with the bestsellers and the, you know, the whole Renaissance back in the seventies was starting to unfold. Um, so it shows you though, that if not many books are being sold well, it's immediately assumed that the readers here aren't interested in them. Mm. But books do depend on a, you know, a good marketplace to, to get um, their message, you know, buy me out to, out to the Canadian public. And the fact that we don't fully understand the digital changes and how, and even how the digital process works with this doc, you know, information going out to the booksellers is another part of the awareness problem because it's too, it seems too, um, I want to use the word mysterious, but um, hard to pin down. Mm -hmm. Another good thing that's happening, I think, is that they, the code, it's called the BISAC code, which is the North American code that affects the, um, the metadata that's being sent out about books has a committee with Canadian publishing types on it, with the American publishing types on it. And a, year, a few years ago, you couldn't find a category in their code for a Canadian Indigenous author. Oh my goodness. The, the, the code was Native American. Mm. And so they, <clears throat> when I was writing about this, um, for Now Magazine, uh, I talked to Noah Jenner at BookNet, and and he said that you know they were starting to consider um, putting more markers on their metadata so that Canadian books could be distinguished uh, from the American books. Otherwise, they're just lost in in the flood of them because. Um, Americans publish more books than we do. They have a um, much bigger budget of promotion behind their bestsellers. And that's why also with American bestsellers, when they come up here to a place like Shop Like Indigo, uh, it's easier for Indigo just to promote an American book that's already had a record of selling well in the US rather than having to try and sell a Canadian book that's just come out. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of... Um, challenges that are are difficult for Canadian books in terms of living next door to the you know this huge huge uh, country with huge wealth and resources that we don't have I, I had I had no idea I really appreciate you coming on today Susan and just giving us some background about this really serious critical issue in the Canadian literary market and um, for all our viewers out there we've got to keep reading Canadian <laughs> you know at, like ask our local bookstores and in libraries to to try and get more Canadian content in I, I guess it's difficult with the digital systems not matching what they're ordering but ah Canadian, well, I, Canadian. I think if uh, readers ask the bookstores um, for more Canadian books or, or making more Canadian books visible in the bookstore, yeah. that would yeah. be helpful. And um, this isn't to take away from the value of American or British no. books. No, no. Because there's some wonderful books that are being written. Absolutely. But if, if, if Canadian books aren't given um, it, kind of equal room in the in the marketplace mm -hmm. then then they're going to flounder and then people will have this idea that oh Canadian books aren't very good because they're not selling very well in fact Noah Jenner at BookNet found that in a study they did two years ago that Canadian readers were more impressed with Canadian authors than they'd ever been before 
And That's yet, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, Yay. here we are uh, with the books being instantly available, but very, very hard to discover. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Aw. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, for coming on and being such a fabulous guest today. And I'll also put links down below so you can read Susan's article in Now Magazine. Thank you, Crystal. Thanks for taking an interest in it. Absolutely. My pleasure.